Hi, I'm Steve, and welcome to I'd Rather Be Making. And today, I'd rather be making a lamp that's a blend of technology and nature. I wanted to make a lamp for my wife as a Christmas present. I wanted something that looks organic and also a blend of technology. I like this pattern on the gooseberry seeds. So I was thinking of a pattern like that for an outer shell surrounding a diffuser that is around an internal light. To get the blend of organic and technology, I was thinking of blending the organic part into a geometric shape, like a cylinder. I decided to use a standard lamp holder so that I could use it with Alexa or Google Home. Why aren't those flush? That makes no sense. Who would want to mount this against something flush? I also chose a porcelain lamp holder so it would have a bit of weight to the base. To model the base of the lamp, I took measurements of the height of the holder and its diameter. I sketched a profile of the base in Fusion 360 and then revolved it to make a solid shape. Here's a cutout for the power cord. This is a relief for those screws that aren't flush with the base. This step here is for a reflector that turned out not to be needed. And this step is where the main body of the lamp will set. Once done, export the STL file and print. To simplify the wiring, I got a cable with an integrated switch. Strip back the power cable and thread it through the hole. Then thread the wires through the porcelain housing and screw one wire onto each terminal. Apply RTV to the outer perimeter of the base and push the wired assembly into place. To strain relief the wire, I used a tie wrap and a generous amount of RTV to glue it in place. That's it, the base is done. This is basically the pattern I want. It's called a Voronoi pattern. There are a lot of tutorials on how to make one. But I wanted something quick. I didn't want to spend a bunch of time learning a technique for something I'm not going to do that often. I found an easy way to get the shape I needed. In Fusion 360, I modeled a cylinder that's going to become the diffuser. I chamfered the assembly here to make assembly into the Voronoi pattern easier. Chamfers cause me problems later on, as you'll see. Once everything's done, export the STL file. And I'll use this file to make the Voronoi pattern at thevoronator.com. Select your file, go to the advanced options, Leave the output file type as poly. For number of holes, I selected less holes. Hit start and download your file. Pick the larger file. The simplified one looks too blocky to me. Then open your file in 3D Builder. There's the file I want. Now how am I gonna print that? I only need the side and the top for the lamp. I'm gonna try to print that outer shell without any supports to see what will happen. I'll just cut the bottom part off and discard it. I need to cut the top part off here and save it for later. Just cut it here and slide it and slide it over. There it goes. Now save each piece individually. This top part here is a bit of a problem. I don't want to support that little gap there while it's printing. I don't like using supports, so I'm going to do a little more cutting. This way, when it's printed, this part will be directly against the build plate. On the first version of the lamp, the one I actually gave my wife for a present, 
I printed this part as you see it here, and as you see here, it wasn't a great fit. So in Fusion 360 I made a ring that will support and align the features. Back in 3D Builder, I merged the two pieces together. There they are linked as one object. Now just export the STL file. The top printed fine without incident. Now I need to print out a shell. And let's do this without supports. This is what you get without supports. Okay, we'll try it again with supports. At least I know where it needs some more support. Let's give this a shot. The print's working much better now with supports. I also added some chamfers to the inside and outside to make it easier to align. What the? Uh, that may not have worked out so well. Okay, the chamfers actually reduce the surface area against the build plate. Well, let's try it again without chamfers. That's much better. Success. I'm curious if any of you have used the Vornator before, or you think you might use it in the future. If so, please leave a comment. And if you need any help with it, just give me a shout and I'll help you out. Time to clean off the supports. Did I mention I don't like using supports? You might have a few stubborn bits that you need to clean up with a file. Once you get it clean, slide your diffuser into the shell. To glue the top on, I use super glue. Now this assembly is complete. As soon as I add a light bulb, that is. This is the bulb I chose for my office lamp, and also for lamps I gave to friends and family. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future projects. I didn't know if this IR remote would work through the diffuser, but it does, and from all the way across the room, as I found out later. This particular bulb can cycle through many colors, displaying different patterns, or on solid colors if you like, though I think the best is the smart bulb that's controlled through your home assistant. Here it is in my office. One of the lamps I gave to someone as a gift actually caused problems with their TV. When they would turn the lamp on or off, it would make their TV do the opposite. So I fixed this problem by printing a collimator that goes over the remote. You can see the collimator in next week's video, where I cover home repairs and other fixes with 3D printing. Where's that memory falcon at? Oh, here we go. Until next time, keep making.